All right, students, tomorrow in class we will begin a new unit, and these are the notes for Friday, uh, October the 11th. We're going to begin a fairly lengthy discussion about different types of angles that exist around transversals and what their properties may be. So uh, mark your page, uh, put a line across it or something to indicate you got a new unit coming, and let's get started. Our objective for Friday will be the student will learn the basic categorical names for sets of angles occurring around transversals. Again, the date for tomorrow's class will be Friday, October the 11th. So copy your objective and your date. As always, press pause anytime you need more time to copy something down and then press play when you're ready to move on. Okay, now we've used this word transversal a couple of times and no doubt uh, you have been wondering what it is. No reason you would have worked with this term before, but here it is now. A transversal, simply put, is a line that intersects two or more lines. And the diagram that you see on your screen there, line C, is a transversal because it hits two or more lines. Line B is not necessarily a transversal until we have evidence that it hits another line, and the same would be true for line A. Now, one of the things that uh, does get a little bit confusing as we work on uh, these uh, transversals is it is actually possible to have multiple transversals in a diagram at one time. As you'll see, it can cause the diagram to become a little cluttered looking, okay? but the only thing you really need to keep in your, in your mind is that we're only going to be focused on one transversal at a time. Okay? So if something is, going around a lot, uh, something is going on around the black transversal intersecting the green and the blue lines, then we will block out everything else in the diagram except for the black transversal and where it hits the green and the blue lines, and so on. When a transversal intersects two lines, there are angles that are formed around the intersections. And this is where our discussion over the next several days is going to be focused on the, these angles that are at these intersections. Okay, So we're going to use this diagram that we're looking at here. So go ahead and copy this diagram down and then we're going to apply several definitions to this same diagram. So you can save yourself a little time and trouble by not having to copy down the diagram every single time. Just get it down once and then we will refer back to it as we go. As you can see, there are eight angles that are formed as this red transversal is intersecting these two black lines. These angles have categorical names according to their locations around the transversal. That is going to be our goal today to get these categorical names down. So from here on out, when we are talking about a particular pair of angles, we will know what to call them. Okay. Our first set of angles is one that uh, actually causes people the most trouble trying to figure out where they are. They are corresponding angles. Now corresponding angles are angles that exist in the same basic location, but at different intersections. Okay. Using the diagram that you already have in your notes, let's see if we can apply this definition to that diagram. The definition says, they are angles that exist at the same basic location, but at different intersections. You can see from the diagram that there are two intersections with the transversal, one of them that angles 1, 2, 3, and 4 are surrounding, and then another one that 5, 6, 7, and 8 are surrounding. Okay? These are the different intersections that the definition is referring to. Okay? Now, we want the same basic location 
but different intersections. So let's say we picked on an angle like angle one. Okay, it exists at one intersection and it is basically upward and left of its intersection, up and to the left. Angle one would correspond to another angle along the same transversal that is also up and left from its intersection. Okay, so look at the other intersection. What is up and left from it, the second intersection? Angle five. Angle one and angle five are corresponding angles since they are both up and left of their intersections. Now, is that the only example of corresponding angles that we could find in the picture? Absolutely not. We could have very easily uh, first suggested angle number two. What would angle number two be a corresponding angle with? Angle number six. And then you could have the same for angle three and angle seven, and also angle four and angle eight. Those are all examples of corresponding angles because they are on uh, along the same transversal and they exist in the same basic positioning but at different intersections along that transversal. The second category of angles that we are talking about today are what are called alternate interior angles. Okay. Now these names, uh, the ones that we have from here on out, they're actually fairly easy to understand if you will learn how to read the graph. The name basically tells you exactly how and where to look in the diagram for the picture or for the angles. Okay, alternate interior. They are angles that are on alternating sides of the transversal, but still on the interior of the two intersected lines, which is to say they are going to be in the space between the two lines that the transversal is running into. So once again, using the same diagram from before, you don't need to necessarily copy it down again. Okay, let's look and see if we can find a pair of alternate interior angles. Okay, well interior, obviously we are looking at the space in between the two intersected lines. Those are angles three and four and five and six. They are on the interior. Okay. However, they say it says they need to be on opposite sides of the transversal, okay, which means it could be three and four or three and six, okay, or possibly five and six or five and four. However, one last thing, just like corresponding angles, we would want them to be at different intersections along the same transversal. So let's see if we can apply all of that. Let's look at angle three. Okay, we want another angle that is on the inside between the two lines. We want an angle that is on the opposite side of the transversal. And we want an angle that is at the other intersection. Well, there's only one angle that fits all of that information compared to angle three, and that is angle six. Are angle three and angle six the only example of alternate interior angles? Let's look at angle four. We want an angle that is on the interior. We want an angle that is on the other side of the transversal, and we want an angle that is at the other intersection. That brings us to angle five. Our third category, okay, much the same as we saw a moment ago, this time we are looking at same side interior angles. As you can imagine, the definition says they are angles that are now on the same side of the transversal, but still on the interior of the two intersected lines. So again, using the same diagram, let's look. We are trying to find a uh, special kind of angles that are on the interior. So once again, we're looking at angles three, four, five, and six. Okay. This time we will want them on the same side of the transversal. Okay. So that'll narrow it down to three and five, four and six. And again, we will want them to be at different intersections along the same transversal. So that very much narrows it down. These are kind of difficult to miss. So if you look at angle three, we are looking for another angle on the interior 
this time on the same side of the transversal with angle 3 and at different intersections. The same side interior angle with angle 3 is angle 5. Are they the only set that we can see? No. Also on the interior, on the same side and at different intersections are angle 4 and angle 6. There is an alternate term that you definitely need to make note of in your notes, and that is this. You will see these things from time to time referred to as consecutive interior angles. Consecutive interior angles. These are uh, the terms same side and consecutive. They are synonyms in this particular instance. So there is no telling which way they will ask the question. The definition remains the same, but we do need to be familiar with both terms just in case they call on one versus the other. And the final set of, uh, final category of angles that we're looking at today are the alternate exterior angles. Okay, once again, these describe exactly where they are and what they, uh, where to find them. Alternate exterior angles are angles that are on alternating sides of the transversal, but are on the exterior of the two intersected lines. Using the same diagram once more, okay, this time we are looking on the exterior. The exterior would include angles 1 and 2 and 7 and 8. Okay, we're on the exterior this time. As it says, alternate, so we're looking on alternating sides of the transversal once again. And as always, we are looking at two different intersections along the transversal. So let's start off with angle one. Let's look at angle one and say, okay, does he have an alternate exterior angle to pair up with? Okay, well, let's look. Okay, we want to be on the outside. We want to be, uh, uh, I'm sorry, we want to be on the outside of the two intersected lines. We want to be uh, on alternate sides of the transversal. Okay, and we want to be at different intersections, so angle 1 would be an alternate exterior angle with angle 8. And if you look in the diagram, you've probably already spotted that there is another set of alternate interior angles, and that would be angle 2 and angle 7. With all of these angles, there is only one thing to watch out for. Obviously, you need to know the four different definitions before we'll be able to have much success in this unit. Okay, But there is one thing that has to happen, and the, it is that these terms may only apply around one transversal at a time. And let me show you what I mean by one transversal at a time. Consider this diagram for a moment. Here is like one that we saw at the beginning of the notes. We have a situation where there are more than one transversal in this graph. Now, if you look at the positioning of angle 1 and angle 2, we would categorize those two as corresponding angles because they are in the same basic position, down and to the right, at different intersections along that left-hand vertical transversal. Similarly, we would also categorize angle 2 and angle 3 as being corresponding angles because they are in the same basic positioning down and to the right okay, along their transversal, okay, that one at the bottom going horizontal. The catch is this. Angle 1 and angle 2 are corresponding. Angle 2 and angle 3 are corresponding, but we cannot say that angle 1 and angle 3 are corresponding angles, and the reason we cannot is because there is not a transversal that connects the intersection at angle 1 to the intersection at angle 3. You cannot connect the dots with these terms. You can't go from 1 to 2 to 3 and call that a way to get from 1 to 3. does not work that way with these terms. 
Also, just one other little hazard. Every once in a while, somebody falls into the trap of thinking that the way that I have numbered these angles, the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 example that we use for all four of the definitions, that that is the way that angles will be labeled in every picture that they ever see. So all they will ever have to do to find a corresponding angle will be to find angle number 1 and angle number 5. Or for an alternate interior angle, well, all they'll need to do is find angle number 3 and and number six and that is absolutely not the truth I just gave you that example with those numbers just as as I said an example the angles that you will encounter inside of your problems could be uh, numbered or lettered or labeled anything that the person who put the drawing together would like to label them okay you need to memorize the positioning uh, the definitions that tell you how to find them rather than trying to memorize the the numbers of those names. That is all of your notes. I appreciate you finding time to tune in tonight. I will see you in class tomorrow.